going on people welcome to 137 works and today we're going to be doing an updated and definitive er a set of course a drifting guide this time for my new trusty Trustmaster. trusty Trustmaster. that was not intentional i'm keeping it in though Trustmaster t uh, t300 rs so if you haven't seen i'll leave a link to it in case it's useful for you but back when i used to be on my logitech g920 i did i think it's 2018 i did like in a definitive drifting guide now i know how can you do an updated definitive drifting guide most of the stuff in the video will probably be the same i'm just going to try and condense it and make it a bit kind of snappier a bit and kind of update it a little bit if there's any been any changes to my process in how i kind of do things with a set of course and content manager and stuff like that but basically yeah so that's what it is the video where i made in back in 2018 with the g920 the definitive set of course a drifting guide we're just going to basically bring it up into uh, 2021 essentially with a new wheel which is the most important part uh, i imagine most people who click on this video will be clicking for the wheel settings for my wheel settings and set up and all that kind of stuff for the trustmaster uh, t300 rs so if that's what you're looking for as ever the way that i lay these out is i split them up into kind of chapters what you need to get started with some sites that you might take advantage of uh, for getting mods and cars and files that you might need and stuff like that then we jump into a set of course a, a content manager which is going to be obviously one of the things that you need and we kind of look around there that the kind of some of the basic features of that then we're going to get to the wheel settings um, and we'll talk about i'll show off all my wheel settings within content manager and then it comes to um kind of like setting up a race picking cars picking a car in a track combination getting out onto the track and just kind of vaguely how i would set up a car to go drifting and um, probably i'm going to use one of the wdt world drift tour cars uh, or world drift drift tour world drift tour street cars as they're probably kind of some of the best slash easiest the best combination of like brilliant physics to kind of easy to learn for newbies so that's about it we're going to get started with chapter one which is what you'll need and how to get started and kind of links and stuff like that that'll obviously everything that you need will be in the description in kind of like order of where they appear in the video so yeah that's about it i hope you enjoy it so first and foremost, the thing that you're going to want the most is a set of course a content manager. That's basically before we do anything else, we're just going to install get a content manager. So kind of as simple as you might imagine, a set of course a content manager. Of course, presuming you spell it right, it should be the first link. Content manager, uh, alternative launcher for a set of course. So that's basically what you're going to want. And yeah, basically all the information that you hear or that you need is going to be here on this page. I think as far as I know, you just scroll down straight to the bottom, if I'm not mistaken. And basically, yeah, you just scroll down to the bottom, download the live version or support us. Listen, I'm never going to be the one to tell somebody how to spend their money or what like you say oh you should support this creator or whatever that but for the sake of what it costs you or what it costs you here like what you get with the full version is just like, i couldn't i don't there's not much more that's worth the little amount of money that you'd have to pay to get it as as much as content manager the full version so you can get the light version which has some features restricted but basically to unlock the full, full program version you need to transfer any amount of money using one of the following systems so basically just pick your poison sort of thing once you get it all downloaded and installed i'm not going to walk through that pretty basic if you've ever downloaded and installed a program before i don't imagine it's much different but once you got that downloaded we are going to get the trust master stuff sorted out so this video is obviously going to be made with the presumption that you have your wheel connected up whatever setup that you have like for me i've got still my g920 pedals the wheels the pedals that come with this are trash honestly so i just got an adapter from rico uh, rick rick motek rico motek which adapts which is basically an adapter that goes into the t300 rs for the g920 pedals and i've got my logitech extreme 3d pro flight stick thing as my handbrake here so yeah so whatever you need to do to get set up just plug everything in if it has to do like a first time installation which it may do just let it do that but the next thing that we're going to get is so you're going to want to type in trustmaster t300 rs downloads which will bring you basically to the support section of the trustmaster site for the wheel and you should have where are they now drivers and firmware so can't remember exactly the process because it's been a couple of months now or been well, a month or two now but basically you either when you plug the wheel in it might install the basic drivers but just you know for the sake of it update the latest uh, drivers and firmware i'm obviously not going to show it again it's the same sort of thing if you've ever installed anything in your life it's basically the same thing run the exe follow the on-screen uh, on-screen instructions and you should be good to go so once that's downloaded and installed under t for trustmaster you should have trustmaster ffb racing wheel and you'll see all of these options basically so you've got update service firmware update and control panel the first thing you want to do is be running a firmware update just to make sure that you've got the latest updates I think i do and i don't want to mess with it while i'm recording so i'm not going to actually check it out just yet but yeah basically follow the steps please select the device you wish to update it would be your trustmaster t300 rs and the firmware you want to use which is obviously going to be the latest one if there is one and press ok that will basically update it the wheel might spin around itself a couple of times and stuff like that that should be it but once that's done basically we're going to go back to trustmaster here and control panel it's not quite as nicely done as the uh g9 as the g920 logitech gaming software uh, thing is in my opinion it's subjective but yeah basically 
it's slightly differently laid out. So you have to come into like literally your PC, like Windows game controllers, which is not ideal. Click on Trustmaster T300RS and click on properties. So this will bring up the actual Trustmaster control panel. And this is where you can make any adjustments if you need to. So the vast majority of people will have this sentence that I'm going to be using here. So as I said, not much of what I'm putting in this video is going to be revolutionary or game changing or some secret little setting that I kind of created myself. It's going to be me standing on the shoulder as a giant, basically learning everything that I've come across and like that I came across in the internet while I was researching it and putting it all into one hopefully succinct video. So yeah, so don't be surprised if there's nothing in here that's not super like hidden or whatever. But basically, yeah, so if it's everything is set up and correct, you push the accelerator. This is a weird thing as well, by the way, I noticed this in certain games. That's the accelerator on the G920. So if you're using G920 pedals, it's going to show up as the clutch. Don't worry about it. The brake is the middle pedal and the gas is the left pedal. It flips them basically. Don't know why, but it's just a weird thing. I guess it's up to do with the uh, the adapter that I have to use there. But it works fine. It works fine in the game. The game rec games recognize it absolutely no problem. So as far as settings, rotation and angle, it goes up to 1080. You can absolutely like you can make this a 1080 degree wheel if you want. It's just that most games don't either. Either that's not that they don't support it. It's just 900 is basically the standard. Like you can put it in 1080 just for kind of fun games every now and again. If you know that the car that you're driving, for example, is a 1080 degree uh, turn radius. But just by and large, everything really, just really everything uses the, the 900. So you should be absolutely fine with that. Point of view hat switch. Just basically go through, make sure all the axes, for lack of a better attempt at that word, uh, work. All the buttons get recognized. If you've done everything correctly so far. It should, and if it doesn't, basically just a simple case of going through, running the drivers, running the firmware update, making sure everything, like plugging them in, plugging it back out, maybe restarting the PC, general troubleshooting, stuff like that, nothing too crazy complicated. So that's that. Test forces is just like things where you can press buttons and it will do some engine tests, like kind of things like that. So you can just test the force feedback out. And then finally gain settings. So these are the things that people would actually want to be changing depending on how they want their wheel to feel. Some people recommend like 75% overall force feedback and master gain settings. Some people recommend 100. I found 100 to be where I like it. I found with my combination of stuff in a set of course, if I have it on 75, it's just too soft. It's not kind of like strong enough with, with, the, way, with the way that I have set of course I set up. So 100% for me, detail gain settings here. Obviously we're looking at constant periodic spring and damper. I've got 100 for all three and zero for damper again because i'm standing on the shoulders of giants i'm fully willing to admit it i don't know what necessarily each of those does i just see that the consensus generally between the large the large majority of people seems to be 100 for each one and zero for the last one so that's what i've set it at and it feels fine to me it feels absolutely perfect auto center settings and um, by the game which is recommended and so that's it doesn't really matter i don't think what you've got to set it out there because you can't you can't adjust it so that is that for the wheel set up outside of set of course if you do all that when when we start getting into a set of course set and doing everything it should all line up if that makes sense like you've got your wheel sorted at the base level at the fun at the kind of like the control panel level so everything that you do then going forward the set of course uh, should be based off a good base setup sort of thing so now that you've got your wheel set up you need some stuff to drive and some places to drive them on so what i'm going to be doing is leaving a link to some to some of this websites that i'm going to be showing you here where you can get some mods and basically yeah we will I'll kind of walk through and pick out some of the best ones that I can kind of quickly recommend. So the first one we're going to check out is Assetto Land, and this is kind of a controversial one. Some people accuse them of like uploading stolen mods and ripped mods and low quality mods and stuff like that. It can be hit or miss, like some of them can be absolutely dreadful and some of them can be very good. Like they just kind of gather everything they can, basically. And um, that's not like paid mods or whatever like that. I feel like I just made a controversial statement. There will be at least one person who says, ah, they upload pay mods, they're ripping off things. <laughs> like Not intentionally, I don't think uploading pay mods, like like some kind of like other places. Yeah, basically not necessarily for drift cars, but for basically all other kind of cars, you've got loads, loads and loads and loads of options here. There is drift cars in there. Like if you click on Toyota, you'll see like there's like chasers and Corollas and stuff like that. So yeah, just loads of different options. It's where I get a bunch of my cars uh, that I like, even some of the ones I featured in the video I've gotten from Settle Land. So that's number one. Number two, probably should have been number one because it's typically the most reliable. It's been a bit funny lately. There's not been the greatest quality of late, very, very lately. There's been some crap uploaded that's been allowed to stay up longer than I kind of would have liked to see from uh, from a site with race department's um, kind of reputation. But it is race department. <laughs> so race department basically is just a kind of gold standard. If it's on here as a general rule, it's good quality. It's going to be high quality. It's going to be well reviewed. Stuff that's low quality or rips or, or bad conversions or whatever that, they generally get deleted fairly quickly. As I said, generally lately they've kind of been slipping on it, I've noticed. But you can get everything here. You've got miscellaneous, different camera, uh, miscellaneous rather, different TV cameras or camera angles for replays and stuff like that for different tracks. The rain effects for the new rain effects in the, um, the latest version. Just stuff like that. Yeah, basically loads of other games as well. So great little resource there for 
drifting specifically this is basically your one-stop shop this is a google drive document uh, basically that is a little buggy like for example you click on new track and it just reloads the page but what it basically is is that somebody whoever runs this has gone through a lot of work over the last couple of years i want to say the year or two at least and they basically car packs as you can see look across the top here basically fairly easy navigatable it's not the best laid out like a google drive document isn't the best way in the world to do it but um as you can see here like file that's gone back to 2019 there so yeah you can see load of drift tracks basically you can basically control f like if you know how to use google docs you can just say oh i want to get mayhem there it is mayhem 2020 v1 and there's apparently another version of mayhem sports on 2019 so simple enough tracks car packs which is multiple cars so this is where for example you'd get wdts no so i'm gonna specifically get world drift tour street so this would be the pack that i'd recommend again i'll leave the link specifically to this pack down below as well as the link obviously to the overall drive but world drift tour street is the one that's known to be like a very very good high quality um collection of cards basically so that'd be enough to get you going if you download this and um, when i jump into whatever i jump into later on from wts wdts you'll be able to kind of like match up the settings for the tune and stuff like that as well to get a decent idea as to what what the kind of what it should feel like then you've got random cars which are just random individual cars kind of straightforward as it sounds just random individual single cars that you can download uh, if any of them catch any of the names catch your eye it used to be laid out differently and better in my opinion that it had the thumbnails for each of the cars and each of the tracks and stuff don't know why they changed that and got rid of it but yeah just that's that that's what that is basically other stuff you've got the communities that you can join facebook groups websites discords other places to buy mods here some good kind of like some good mod resources there as well you've got other tutorials sound mod installations how to do a 360 entry it's strange um <laughs> you've got wheel settings tutorials i might actually try to upload my one there at some point i might try to get this video out of there or the g920 one and then guide which is just basically general guides maybe i can get this one put in here as well so yeah that's the three kind of websites that i use the most to get my stuff and that concludes basically chapter one of basic wheel setup and a couple of things that you'll need um to kind of get the ball rolling okay so i nearly forgot these two things that i'm not going to get into kind of in-depth details about how to install or anything like that because that's a whole separate video basically but two things that you're absolutely going to want that don't come as default with a set of Corsa Sol and the custom shaders patch custom shaders patch does like the rain if you've seen a set of Corsa rain effects like that that's custom shaders patch Sol is basically it's like the day night transitions 24 hours you can race from daylight into nighttime back into daytime yeah kind of speed up time and all that kind of stuff all the different weather effects and stuff that would be the that's what Sol does essentially the ability to have like cloudy skies or like snow effects or whatever so that's Sol it's amazing basically a must have essentially in my opinion completely free just a completely free mod that you can install I'll leave the link to that in the description and then there is the custom shaders patch with it which is like the lights having the lights having lights on your car say if you're driving a gt3 car having like the number on the side lit up the kind of track lights and stuff like that at night time the rain effects you might have seen so if you've seen any of the videos that lately of the kind of new previews of sol or of uh, the custom shaders patch where we have like now actually got rain falling on windscreen or windows and you've got like the windows wipers wiping away and all that kind of stuff that's all custom shaders patch so sol is basically available on the on race department again link below and customers uh, custom shaders patch rather i think you can probably just install it straight from content manager uh custom shaders patch but we will i'll just i'll put the link there in, in just in case but uh yeah i just wanted to throw those in before we get to the, to the next chapter because they're just basically essential they're, they're, they change the game in ways that you couldn't even believe up next we have chapter two which is going to be content manager and just kind of like an introduction brief introduction overview of where everything is and kind of like how to kind of just vaguely navigate content manager so without further ado let's get into chapter two <music> So in chapter two, we're going to take a kind of simplify, condensed look at content manager, just kind of the essentials. I'm going to show what I know for a fact that I use all the time. I'm not going to put in like all every single page of every single um, section of it or anything like that, anything crazy, because the majority of stuff I've actually just left as standard as it comes out of the box. So if there's anything that I specifically know that I change like often or kind of like need to change, I will point that out. But in general, as you open it up here, I believe this is the first screen that opens up. It's basically the drive page. So this is where you pick your car by clicking this button scrolling through your list of cars pick your track by clicking this button picking through your uh, list of tracks you can search you can filter them same with the cars you can search or you can filter them by different their different categories or whatever uh, you can pick your skin here you can pick what type of track that you that you want to do practice hot lap time attack race etc you can pick like your kind of difficulty settings like your assists basically in here as you can see as for drifting particularly you want them all off essentially tire blankets on no car specific controls needed start from pits typically yeah start from the pits usually and yeah that's basically it then you can set your weather so if you've installed salt and content 
content um, custom shaders patch I basically always pick Sol and clear and this is not set to the right one that should be optimum for drifting because you just want a fully gripped up track basically don't check real conditions don't check ideal conditions and your temperature can be whatever just put it somewhere in the middle 13.7 can we get it here <laughs> wind zero and then ballast and restrictor and zero you don't want them messing with the car at all we're not looking for drifting because that's gonna I don't know what that does maybe points or something I don't know uh, I always just ever basically do practice when I'm just doing laps and, and kind of drifting wall taps and that kind of thing that's all you need to know for drifting that and since this is a drifting focused video I'm not going to look at anything else lap times we don't need results we don't need media is where basically as it says or as it sounds like your replays and your screenshots are stored content is again as it sounds like your cars as you can see there a fair few 1527 tracks 402 tracks miscellaneous which is just like your apps basically driver models fonts and that kind of stuff not necessarily right now your mods list of all the mods that you've installed this is where you'll have to uninstall them enable them disable them sort of thing um as, as you kind of as you may need to do as you can see some of mine there tools this is a great one if you don't do this and if anybody's even watching this video that might not necessarily need these beginner tips here's a great tip for you compress your files it increases uh, decreases load times it saves you literally if you've got as many mods as i have it saved me literally tens and tens and tens of gigs like so definitely it's worth doing that it's basically just launch i think it's compress and then compress like something like that it's like three steps basically to it and you save a load of pro it doesn't do anything doesn't do any damage to any of the files or anything like that it just basically speeds up the loading process not by mad like mad amounts but just by a, a, a decent chunk and yeah it saves you a ton of space just no no downside to it basically that i've ever found and just yeah as a space hoarder essentially like that it's great to have so lastly and kind of more most importantly you can probably imagine that we're getting close to the coveted time now for the sentence for the wheel i say that as if i didn't include a timestamp in the description to specifically jump to that section if you missed that there is one down there if you're just like will this guy shut up and get on with it <laughs> like there will be a timestamp timestamp in the description for the wheel sentence specifically so right about and updates this is where you're going to update content uh so the content manager sentence here um i'm just basically going to quickly skim through all the pages just pause the video as you need to i'm not going to go into all the details there um because i just frankly don't know if what i changed and what i didn't change if there's anything that i um, messed around with basically yeah just your stuff should all look like my, my stuff long story short i don't think there's any di major differences between like systems or wheels or anything like that in here that should make a difference so yeah basically if you just copy yours to look like mine i can't imagine that you'd have many problems here's your set of course options apps not super important these are all personal to you these are just the apps some of the apps that i've downloaded off race department i would enable developer apps just because that lets you take screenshots and stuff like that but custom shaders patch has its own camera uh, photo mode i would enable python apps and developer apps just because you know, it's there's certain apps that need that essentially. So just I'm not going to go into the in-depth reasons, but just yeah, definitely make sure those those two are at least are checked. App Windows again, not very important. Video, I'm not really going to bother with because it's so subjective. Depending on your system and your resolution and your frame rates, targets, and all that kind of stuff that you want to be achieving, I wouldn't bother with it. But just know that down below my head here, there's an option to save presets, so that's great and handy. I have <coughs> excuse me presets for monitor VR 2060, so my VR settings where they're kind of reduced a little bit. A friend of mine, Liz, she gave me her VR recommendations settings because i think she had at least a 2060 at the time that i so i just have that saved there from then and then my vr multiplayer which is basically just completely like minimized um settings for playing in multiplayer well i don't really use ice i tend to just stick with the vr 2060 now and the monitor and they're basically anybody's interested that's my vr 2060 settings for my gtx 20 or my rtx 2060 and i use a amd ryzen 5 2600x does that make sense <laughs> yeah so but again everybody's system is different so there's not real much real point in that so view and ui again this is what i found to be what works for me it's subjective but if you want to copy it just to get the experience that i'm having that i find to be perfect works there you go audio it's where you'll set your audio and um, device and stuff like that your volumes again once again repeat myself ad nauseum but it's objective but this is, what, this is what works for me with my system controls is obviously the wheel we'll get to that in a bit don't want to spoil too much there but we will come back to that obviously for the actual proper wheel settings uh, which is going to be its own chapter after this look at um at content manager so miscellaneous again just copy them down system copy them down <laughs> again just repeat myself kind of just uh like anything with settings basically it's going to be it's going to be super personal so so custom shaders patch basically this is where we're going to come to get any settings that you need to change or update or whatever um for the custom shaders patch options so you can see here that these are all the different things that you can do like extra effects for example we'll have this where you can like make more smoke out of the car I'm trying to think what else lighting effects is going to be obviously the lighting from cars like your your your, your lights essentially stuff like that again not going to go into all the details of them because they are fairly good out of the box like you can kind 
kind of work out for yourself whatever you whatever you may need to some useful things tracks configs every now and again just periodically as you're downloading new tracks and just in general every now and again periodically go into tracks configs open this top right button see if there are any entries that you need to install basically it's this is your config file for the lightings on tracks so if you're downloading if, if you download a track and it's in the, the um, content manager kind of repository i think it's called where basically they have like a stored like it's like a, i'd imagine like a google drive or a server or something like that that has a load of like properly done and finished lighting config files basically just draws them from that so it automatically downloads them you don't have to go searching around forums and stuff like that for random lighting INIs which is dead handy same thing for tracks VAO up the top right I actually strangely enough somehow have them all completely sorted so that's that's interesting and then the last tab here is just apps basically and that is where you can kind of mess around in more detail with your apps because apps for the most part if I'm not mistaken are kind of like not open source per se but just like you can go in and tweak some individual settings and stuff it takes ages to load for some reason so I'm not going to bother with that we can now get back to the coveted chapter 3 which which is bum ba bum bum the wheel setup for the Trustmaster T three hundred RS in a second. Welcome to Chapter Three, which is bum ba bum the wheel setup for the Trustmaster T three hundred RS. If you guessed that, you were correct. Good job, good be for you. <laughs> So what you're going to want to do is go over to controllers here in Content Manager on the controls page and make sure that it's actually recognized. So Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, that's my handbrake. So you can see as I pull that there, the axis moves. Down below is what we're looking for. T300RS, Trustmaster T300RS. Let's just give it a test. Accelerator, brake, clutch, steering, all recognized, all good. The buttons, fantastic. Yeah, and then obviously just I have my Xbox, Xbox One uh, controller plugged in. But that's obviously not relevant right now. So it's fairly simple. Click this do the thing simple as that over the throttle same thing as you can imagine just press the button click the accelerator hold the accelerator down all the way for me obviously it's showing up as a touch pedal as i said i'm using the g920 pedals which just reverses it a bit but your one should say uh, gas pedal brake pedal same thing click it press the button and then clutch click it and press the button so just a quick tip there while i noticed that that wasn't actually set properly i might as well throw this quick tip in here actually just how to set up a logitech extreme 3d pro flight stick as an e-brake basically set it to the angle that you want i'll include a clip of the angle that i put it at here now over the screen basically yeah so i do it with the flight stick as if it was meant to be pointed forward i point it to the right because that's the natural for me as a right hander that's the natural way that i kind of grip it sort of thing if you're left-handed obviously you might want to turn it the other way but it's personal preference again that's just for me i find it the most comfortable in the hand to, to pull it back like that something like that basically for me it's axis one and it's pulled and i'm pulling it back so yep that's that yeah so once you assign it basically you want to go uh from 53 percent to 55 percent basically and that will lock it on it won't have any weird dead zones issues it'll either be on or it'll be off essentially basically as soon as you start pulling it back it's it's locked essentially so yep there's that just a quick note on the pedals uh, i don't know if it apply for all pedals i know definitely with logitech pedals for some reason they invert them out of the box no idea why so if i uncheck that for some reason the gas pedal is fully accelerated is fully pressed essentially so if we were to go in game as soon as i start the game up i would just be off the off the limiter and accelerating by pushing the pedal down will actually take us off so it's very important that if you are at least using the logitech pedals to use the invert function there so i'm not sure if that's the same with the thrustmaster ones say the three t three pa as whatever they're called or the stock ones that come in the box i don't think that they're inverted out of the box but um yeah just something to keep an note on back up to the important part here the steering wheel fine we've assigned it but some of the options that you might not know about or you might be curious about what should we look for in here you don't want to obviously be inverting the steering wheel because it doesn't have that issue if you invert the steering wheel you're gonna have a very confusing time so degrees because we're obviously matching it up with the um control panel degrees which we set to 900 we're gonna set it at 900 gamma one scale 100 don't auto adjust the scale to match the car's steering lock filter zero and speed sensitivity zero not going to go into all the details of them just copy it as it is the easiest way that i can tell you is that you're just that's the easiest way to get a one-to-one -one rotation basically at nine to 900 degrees simple as that like so that's that onto the buttons so these are kind of some of them at least are kind of personal preference and my use case isn't going to be exactly what most people's will be because i don't have the shifter at the moment i've have to exclusively shift with the paddles you'll see there that's why next gear is assigned obviously right paddle left paddle kind of common sense but i'm just going to show you anyway click it press right paddle click it left paddle yeah for some reason my paddle my gear shifts are also assigned to space and alt for some reason strangely enough so yeah that's basically my setup at the moment until i get the shifter and um, sorted out so yeah that's it's going to be a different use case but it's very simple if you're using a h pattern shifter click that button when you're in a car that you 
uses a H pattern shifter, it'll use it automatically. It won't recognize. I don't think it recognizes the paddles in any way. Might do. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've had a H pattern shifter. If you are lucky enough to have the, the shifter, what you need to do is use H shifter, have that checked, and then click on it, push it into gear, good to go. Click on it, push it into gear, good to go, so on and so forth. Fairly explanatory. And then for or, gear or, whatever way that you do, I think on the G920 ones, they were, it was just back until right. But you know, every wheels, every shifter might be different. So just something to keep an eye on. These buttons are kind of almost randomly assigned. I didn't assign these, so I'm actually going to clear them because I don't, I don't want that. Some of the biggest ones for me personally, because I also do a lot of kind of like Formula One racing and stuff like that, GT racing, where you might want some cards or DRS buttons. So I've got button zero, which is, you know, obviously the, the old button on the, on the G300 RS and triangle for act DRS activation. It's just what I remember from the Formula One uh, game days back in years gone by. Uh, headlights on the up arrow, for lack of a better term. System buttons, nothing really too important in here. Biggest one, exit the race, control E, just to quickly get out of a race and back to, like if you're doing a lot of troubleshooting with a mod or something like that, just to be able to quickly exit the race without having to press pause, find the mouse in VR, for example, and all that kind of stuff. Also with this thing, uh, which is touch panel, which I won't get into, but basically if I go to my set of course, I can just press exit game and that will press Control e on the PC and close the game. Amazing. I might do, I, I need to do a video on this at some point. Unbelievable app. But yeah, that's basically system I wouldn't worry too much about. Patch, there might be some options in here that are kind of useful. Maybe the wipers, if you want to take it like, like again, if these aren't already applied for you, the wipers, because obviously if you're going to be using the rain mod that comes with um, CSP, custom shaders patch, being able to adjust the wipers is pretty handy. But lastly, we come to the force feedback. Now, force feedback, is the all important thing it's like what everybody wants basically to be 100 percent perfect they want to have it exactly as it should be as i said a couple of times standing on the shoulders of giants here i'm not gonna lie and make out like i know what every single setting does and why it's set that way but basically these are just the best combination things that i found and the wheel fail, feels absolutely perfect for me personally you can only just say that based on the combination of these things that i've got that i've got from other people and based on some knowledge i have of myself obviously with the lut's and stuff like that from the past all of these things together have gotten a really great feel for me on this wheel personally so as far as the actual settings here gain 100 you'll see some people again same as with like the control panels some see some people making it lower some people making it a bit higher for me with everything gain 100 is perfect so that's that's basically that filter zero minimum force zero curb effect the effects are something that are kind of controversial a lot of people turn them off i noticed uh, a lot of people just don't want any effects for me i just like it i like the feeling of like when you go over a bumpy road feeling it like i know that some like a lot of people like very serious like like a lot of professional drivers and like kind of comp competitive drivers will say that they don't want any of that messing up the feeling the feedback of what exactly what they're getting through the wheel i just find it's more immersive it's more or I find that the, I find that getting that kind of information like curb effect like if you've got curb effect turned all the way off you don't necessarily know that you're on a curb say with your back wheel especially in VR like when you can't see the back wheel or if you're in cockpit view or whatever like that like knowing that you're up on the curb a little bit that's useful information to me and it's like just feeling that little rumble I'm not sure why some people turn that off completely but that's just again it is a personal preference but just for me that's that's something that I've always found road effect slip effect maybe yes effect you know per, again personal preferences but just for me I like a bit of a bit of each of them miscellaneous enhanced understeer effect I cannot remember I feel like I used to have that checked and I don't remember why I don't anymore. Soft lock and hard lock is basically as simple as it sounds. The wheel is set to 900 degrees of rotation but an F1 car doesn't have 900 degrees of rotation. It only has like say 270 or 360 or 540 whatever it may be. So what that will do is because it's basically like a waste of and like it introduces inaccuracies like you're turning when you don't need to because it's not affecting the car in game. That's basically what that does. It's basically you can choose your own soft lock because hardware lock is um is supported on this T300 RS that's what I have option but basically yeah software lock and hardware lock they just basically do that the same way that you'll feel your T300 RS get heavy but not like physically not able to turn anymore when you have it on 900 instead of 1080 that's basically what it's doing instead of at 900 it's doing it at say 540 or 270 whatever it may be up next we have control boost gain 0% center boost gain uh, or center boost range 0% don't know what they do got it from a reliable source I think it was Alan's uh, settings that he had both of those at zero next up is a very important one and they FFB post processing mode LUT so what we're going to do here is basically do an LUT which is a load something something if I'm not mistaken but I'm probably mistaken so as you can see there basically what this does is it's basically a program that runs analyzes your wheels force feedback ramp or curve or whatever like that looks for excessively weak or strong spots in it and then corrects them if that makes sense that's my vague understanding of it it's not 100% certain if that's 100% but that is my general understanding of what it does basically it just it analyzes the strengths and weaknesses of your specific wheel not being like a t300 rs I mean your physical wheel that's attached to your your thing yeah, because like my 
T300 RS could be different from Alan's T300 RS or whoever, Keenan's, whatever, John Conway. So yeah, basically that's 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 the general idea of it. So this is, it, it basically it, outf it puts a file, you drag that file in and then you should have the perfect kind of force feedback across the range if that makes sense as an example they give you kind of an example of crazy one like that would feel lun like lunacy in the game like that would feel absolutely hilarious i still have my g920 one i think my lut yeah that was a g920 so obviously it needed a bit of a bump right there kind of smoothed out and then went up and curved off a little bit there at the end and this is the t300 rs one so very similar what you want to do is click this link this will open up google you've got lut generator for ac just follow the steps basically you need to download another app called wheel check again i'll leave the links to these things in the description it's going to be a very full description i'm not going to lie but yeah basically follow all these steps and again this is one of them things where if you've got a problem with these or if you've run into a st an issue with these i won't be the one to ask because i don't know all the ins and outs of like wheel check and lut generator i just know that when i run them they work following the steps one two three four five six seven eight just follow the steps as they say word for word you shouldn't have an issue basically that yeah basically what it'll do is it'll analyze your wheel you'll see it'll do this kind of <laughs> like and then it'll do it the other way as far as i remember as well or might just be the one way either way and don't touch it when it's doing that process and that will basically be the thing um calibrating your wheel and kind of generating an lut file so yeah if you follow the steps on the um on the lut LU, on the lut generator page to a t you should then basically have your lut generated at some point you click import lut it should be in your uh, set of course at config folder in your or cfg folder in your documents and basically yeah, you just click on that load it up and you'll see it in the it should show up in the list here and it'll be like a visual representation like that so lastly <laughs> if we're getting there experimental unlock experimental options be careful um i have that checked and i have damper gain set to 100 and minimum damper level to five again i think i got that from alan don't know what it does but if a pro drifter in real life and a really really successful like insanely good competitive drifter has them set to that that's good enough for me so this is a very important app that i definitely recommend uh, i'm gonna throw it in here at the end of the chapter just because i forgot to record it at the, or talk, forgot to talk about it in the actual take so i'm just gonna throw it in here it's force feedback clip ffb clip what it does essentially is on a ca per car basis it brings down the force feedback like as you drive it for the first couple of minutes it kind of analyzes and slowly turns down the force feedback for that car until it's no longer clipping clipping is basically when you're hitting them just super high forces that you don't need to be that are basically just kind of muddying the feedback and the kind of um detail the information that you're getting from the wheel essentially like if you're setting if your force feedback for that car for a certain car is too high or if you leave out an overall setting it will potentially basically result in clipping which is just muddying up the kind of the force feedback signal this app again on a car by car basis will adjust it automatically all the links are all the information that you need is in the description there it's fairly simple there's a dynamic mode which will will not be ideal i'd always turn that off just as a quick tip that's the only thing that's the biggest tip that i'll give but yeah basically yeah all the information that you need is there the download link will be there in red obviously if you if, when, when, once you're signed in but yeah definitely recommend that one 100 so that concludes chapter three i believe so next up i'm going to load up show you how to load up a basic simple car on a simple track and get started tune your car give you a basic tune and yeah i'm not going to do a drifting tutorial per se because that would be its own separate video of all the techniques of drifting but just basically how to get in game now once you're all set up and get drifting essentially so see you in chapter four okay so welcome to chapter four this is the kind of the last bit really this is now that you've got everything set up it's picking a car picking a track getting out on track setting up the car with the most basic kind of like simple drift tune ish thing that i can recommend and basically you're just doing a little bit of a slide just gotta make sure that everything works so before we do that i that's the reason that i'm on full screen here is that i wanted to show you a little tip so there's a little thing about the um trust master that i forgot to mention it actually has like a pc style fan inside there like i've seen people modify it and actually swap it out for like a quieter like knock to a fan or something like that which i think is pretty cool but you can do that so and it's also something that i might consider in the future because it is a little loud it's not like a jet engine or anything like that but it's noticeably loud once it comes on basically what it is it comes on automatically um once it reaches a kind of certain amount of usage like a fairly a fairly hectic, hectic drifting session it will come on fairly quickly it's basically to keep the motors cool essentially the, the gate the wheel can experience what's called force feedback fade or like motor fade i think it is one or the other where basically just the strength kind of like kind of trails off a little bit the longer that you use it if you don't have the fan enabled the fan basically pre prevents that so yeah as well as being able to swap out the fan which i think is deadly what you can do to um kind of prevent that and a lot of people say that if you enable this mode you just never have to worry about it it doesn't happen so it's basically something that you should always do because it costs nothing so down here on mode setting down the bottom left here you've got the playstation icon ps4 ps3 for the pc i should have said this at the beginning in the initial kind of setup video you want it to be in ps3 mode so stick in ps3 mode the light should be green and that should be good to go then you should have, shouldn't have any issues connecting to the pc to get the fan into force cooling mode which i think is what they call it basically having the fan on all the time essentially you want to press the mode button and the st button 
button at the same time. You don't have to hold it for any particular amount of time, like the second or two. The mode button will light up or will flash twice. So if it flashes once, it's in automatic mode, which will just basically turn on whenever it, it needs to, essentially. When it flashes twice, it's in permanent mode. So I'm just going to press this now. There we go. <laughs> And the fan has definitely come on there. So you won't be able to pick it up because I'm using NVIDIA RTX voice. So that's going to block that out. So basically, yeah, quick tip. The fan is now always going to be running uh, as long as the wheel is plugged in. And we will get ourselves some cool force feedback. So so now we can put the phone away. The wheel is now, as I said, in full uh, kind of max cooling mode, essentially. The fan's going to be constantly running. We can have a look at how to set up a drift race. So everything is set up. Just making sure your settings are correct. I'm just going to put my... Thing on monitor because I'm not going to bother putting on the headset for this. Controls again, just double check everything, press all your buttons, accesses, make sure everything's recognized. So we should be good to go. Pick your car, pick your car of choice. Since we have downloaded um, the WDT Street, which I'm hoping and presuming that you did based on the link that I gave earlier, WD Street, I find the S15 to be absolutely phenomenal. Now I'm going to be terrible because I'm using the monitor and I'm so used to uh, VR, but I recommend highly My Hand 2020, which should be on that page as well. If you just control F uh, My Hand as we, as we did earlier, My Hand 2020 should be one of the options just download that press okay time doesn't really matter i mean we're about an hour off from being proper cool dudes right now so i'm just gonna fix that there we go so you know as you do weather as we said earlier on clear but this is where you can change it Salt, you can set it to like rain heavy drizzle snow and all kind of stuff there if you want to get the different effects that you get from using them um, Sol essentially so that's pretty cool track as i said optimum here we have tire blankets because we just want to have our tires as warm as possible coming straight out and obviously abs traction control off all this kind of stuff automatic clutch automatic shifting off we don't want that ideal line no thank you and yes you should be absolutely fine keep in mind most anytime as well i should have clarified this earlier on just a real quick aside anytime that there's a settings area you can typically save it as a preset now i don't do that with the with these basically just i never needed to but you can always save them as a preset so you can have different presets for different modes which is pretty handy so that's that so let us get started so down up the bottom right once you've picked your car and you picked your skin all the different skin choices for this car for example yeah, i like just the dmax standard kind of purpley bluey one yeah basically pick the track and we should be good to go so press go and we will jump jump into the game when it loads. Right, so now that we're in the set of Corsa and the game itself, we can see that we've got our options basically. So yeah, you've got the, the pit section, which is basically where you can load up all your setups basically. I always just put mine for every car into the default generic one. And um, so I'm not certain if I go to a different track, I'm not certain for, oh geez, which, which folder did I say that to last? So they'll always be back at the top of the list and easy to find, so it'll always be there. Everything else for drifting in any way, you don't need to worry about, I'm not gonna waste my time with that just now. But what you need to know for gears, basically it's like tuning when anything if you've ever played forza back in the day or currently or whatever tuning is tuning it's all personal so gears are going to be a personal setting for you but if you want to just as i said if you want to just copy down my settings for this car and uh, get the experience that i'm getting with it absolutely fine so gears the tires with the wdt street you've only got the one option but you can usually diff choose different compounds soft slick hard different um competitions use their own their own settings basically sometimes like a lot of the time tire pressures you are going to want to set them personally preferenced again for me i like 28 usually in the about 28 in front 24 on the rear fuel i like to drop down to 10 because you fuel consumption is off so it doesn't make a difference and i was gonna say the it i think it affects the weight of the car so if you load the car up with fuel it will actually be heavier even though it's not consuming it so just having about 10 liters seems to be what, what's worked for me i've never noticed any difference and uh, any issues with it electronics is just a turbo basically um 100 you want 100 turbo you don't want any um like again subjective smaller tracks maybe you don't need as much uh depend on the car as well but just for this car 100 alignment is where you can do your camber and your toe there's my settings here that i use camber should actually be negative two i'm not sure why it's negative one seconds <laughs> uh, dampers just stock i don't think i mess with them drive train diff power diff coast i basically put them both to 100 because that essentially is the equivalent of locking the diff if i understand correctly generic engine limiter to 100 brake bias to 55 brake power to 100 and suspension settings basically your stiffness of your suspensions and your ride height so you can change all that there but again just copy what i have here to get the similar experience i don't know what's going on with my frames at the moment i am going to have to bail out and try to fix them so apologies about that back in one moment Okay, so here we are at the end of a hopefully not too long and hopefully informative and enjoyable enough journey. If you've done everything correctly, if everything has worked out, if you haven't run into any issues, we should be at this stage now, which is basically in the pits, on the track, ready to go for a drive. So, let's see how we get on. So I noticed while I was doing it, like this is a, this is not the first take of this section <laughs> of this chapter. Um, and I noticed that the gears are pretty dreadful. Second gear uh, is very short and third gear is pretty long for this track. Like so getting into the wall is not the most easy thing in the world. But I'm going to try to attempt it for you. Um, but the wheel feels fantastic. Force feedback's doing its job. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. 
Um, as, as far as the force feedback, loads of detail. I can feel every little bump and jolt kind of thing. Um, as we try to bring it into the wall, we get a little tap, little clutch kick. This is the problem with using the um, the paddles, is that I can never tell where the one that I want is. <laughs> like, oh god, okay, that was weird. Um, yeah, I can never tell where the gear that I'm looking for is, so like I'll often change up and set it down when I don't mean to. So another reason why I really can't wait for the um, the, the height shifter to arrive. But yeah, we'll do one more lap just to kind of show it off. I'll actually load up uh, force feedback clip here so we can see and just confirm that it is in fact doing its thing. Yeah, so it's set it to 88. It's usually, every, whenever I look at it, depending on the track and stuff like that, it's usually about 88 to 86 in this car. So it is, in fact, doing its thing. So that's awesome. Happy to see it. So we go for another drive. One more lap. Try to get into the wall decently. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty sick run. I'm very happy with that one. Jesus. Into the wall. I got very close out to the outside, I'd imagine. I'm going to probably throw in a uh, a clip of that run at the end of the video to kind of sign off with. But yeah, that's a good way to end the video. I'm happy with that one. Just because to show what good force feedback can do. <laughs> like good wheel settings. So that's about it. Yeah, I suppose we wrap it up there now. Um, yeah, again, as I said, I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you found it useful. I know people did really kind of respond well to the G920 video. Like it's one of my, it's my second highest viewed uh, video ever. It's like 135,000 views or something like that at this point. Ver like vastly overwhelmingly positive feedback. Like the likes dislike ratio was huge. All the comments, the vast majority of comments again were very supportive and, and thankful that, that, that I was able to help them out. Of course, like with anything like with technology with these, I expect a lot of views as well to, to have issues with this and it's not going to be flawless it's just that's the way with tech and that kind of stuff so but if you can eventually get it sorted out and get to, to experience this amazing wheel for the price uh, that's the other thing like a lot of people ask me well you've gone from the g920 to the, the t300 rs i've debated making a video on it i still have the g920 in the in the kind of in the cover there and i thought about breaking it out and doing a side by side and stuff like that but just long story short do i regret the upgrade was it worth the money no and yes <laughs> like i don't regret the upgrade absolutely not it is fantastic for what it for what it costs and yes it's definitely an upgrade and i'm happy with the purchase basically so I hope if you bought one and that's why you're watching these videos, you end up being happy with yours too. Hopefully this video and the setup and that kind of stuff that I was able to provide was enough to be able to uh, get more enjoyment and like easier because I know the reason that I made this video and I like to make these kinds of videos is because I've had to do the like hours of searching like Facebook posts in random groups, like Discord posts, uh, forum threads, Reddit subreddit threads, like the Thrustmaster website threads or Logitech re we website threads, watching all the YouTube videos that I can find discords random discords that you've joined and stuff like that to try and find some decent settings and information about it hopefully by me doing the work for you and condensing this all into one hopefully not too too long video it's going to be useful and kind of quicker and simpler and easier for people to find and the timestamp being in the description as well is hopefully something that will have made this kind of process as easy as possible for you so yeah that's about it if you enjoyed it please do leave a thumbs up subscribe if you're new here thanks for watching and goodbye i got a t-shirt made <laughs>